Caddis Maximus here. This time I'm kind of reviewing various types of wire nuts, mainly comparing more general brands such as Ideal and Heiko and Gardner Bender or GB as to 3M, which would be considered a real premium grade. Introduce people to the general types of wire nuts or wire twist on connectors. And also part of the impetus of this video is I recently helped some people with some electrical service and there is a lot of inappropriately installed wire nuts and there's two major things with wire nuts. One, they don't just twist on until they're kind of snug. They're just like a nut where they twist on until they stop moving where everything is cinched up. If you're able to twist on a wire nut and it still feels like you it's all the way down but you're still able to turn it, it means that either the wires have gotten bunched up or you're using too large of a wire nut. And the too large is the second thing. It always seems that people just don't have the right size wire nuts. And so they always use one that may be a little bit too large, such as this blue one, when they're just putting together, say, a couple of little 14 gauge wires. And it barely holds on. It's a real serious fire hazard. And with all my tool reviews, as you can tell, when it comes to using a wire nut for a particular situation, I like to have just the right one. It all depends on the bundle of wires. You, if you're just doing two 14 gauge wires, you'd use maybe a small orange one. But if you're doing three 14 gauge wires, then you may do a yellow one. If you're doing four 14 gauge wires, then you may do a red one. So that's kind of the big deal. So first, a quick introduction. A wire nut literally is just like a nut that you thread onto a bolt, except for this is a nut that you thread onto some wires. Effectively, all wire nuts will be like this. They'll have their plastic insulated housing. A little bit more modern, better quality ones will have these wings, so it's easier to tighten and loosen them. Versus ones like this, particularly in the smaller sizes, they don't include the wings because you just don't need quite that much leverage. But when it gets to the larger ones, it's hard to grip just a textured barrel and actually get the amount of tightening force you need, so they include the wings. Also, smaller, high-quality ones such as these also do include wings. Generally speaking, they also, as I mentioned earlier, have these metal inserts and they are a square type of wire, which is the actual metal part and it binds into the wire. So not only are the two pieces of wire being crunched together by the nut, the metal coil itself also adds to help with the conductivity and that's why they can be reliable. There's also special ones if you're, you can use wire nuts in damp locations, outdoor locations, maybe even in a, uh, an emergency repair on a boat trailer. I recommend soldering wires on things such as boat trailers, but you can get ones that are this style, which have a kind of a fingered boot and then they're filled with silicone or dielectric grease to make them uh, outdoor rated. And so they do actually make wet rated wire nuts. Generally speaking, there are some very cheap wire nuts, such as this white one here, which actually doesn't have any metal insert. It is all plastic. Generally speaking, I recommend against them. They're really cheap, but not having a metal insert, just really, they don't last as long. Under thermal cycles, they want to get loose much more easily. And generally don't recommend them. There's also more premium grade units, such as this one right here, if we can get the light. We can see that this one actually has a copper insert or a copper plated steel wire and though these type are real nice so if you get the real expensive ones then you do get what you pay for you get a wire nut that has just a little bit more conductivity because it's using copper plated or pure copper alloy wire versus galvanized steel and one of the last types to point out is these are primarily only seen in green for grounding lugs although you can get others this has a through hole so this is actually designed for you to take a series of ground wires have a couple that you're wire nutting this way and you actually have another wire that you can run through the top of the wire nut. It's a little bit funky trying to get these wire nuts to, well the insulation's too big on this wire. Oops. It's a little funky to try to get that wire and this wire all tied together but a little bit of practice and you're able to do it and the purpose of these is you can attach multiple ground wires together this becomes what is known as a pigtail, and you can screw this, to say, to the electrical box and then still have the convenience of a wire nut to connect uh, all the wires together. And you don't have to have wires that are like folded over backwards. You just have one conveniently coming out of the top. They're pretty rare to see these three through hole type, but if you ever do see them, that's generally what they're for. 
We'll also compare the sizes. They tend to be colored, generally speaking, for the sizes that they're used for. And when colors repeat, such as this little blue and these big blues, it's because there is a huge disparity in size. And there is no uh, confusion when you say, I want a little, I need a small blue or a big blue, because obviously the small blue is way smaller than the large blue one. We have our orange ones. Orange, yellow, and red are going to be the most common sizes, unless you're doing large bundles of wire or wire tying very large, or excuse me, wire nutting very large wires. That's where these blue and these gray ones come from. But you rarely actually use wire nuts on conductors that are really this large. They tend to take so many amps that you have screw down terminals or some type of, you know, more positive way of connecting the wires. And it's just because of the amount of amps, one, and number two, it's actually pretty difficult, even on stranded wire, to really get these giant wire nuts tight enough. There are special nut drivers that will drive these type that have wings. A poor man's way of doing it, poor person's I should say, is to take an old quarter inch deep well socket, say like on this you'd take a 13 or a half inch quarter inch socket or 3 8 socket, and you just use a grinder to grind out a couple slots on each side of the socket, and then your socket becomes a wire nut driver. And generally speaking, all the brands are pretty good, pretty competitive with each other. But I generally recommend, of course, buying the highest quality ones that you can find. That's to a limit. What we have right here are some of the 3M ones. And actually, let me dig up some more 3M ones. And before I forget in this video, I forgot in the last couple of videos to so wish everybody a happy new year and hope you did have an excellent uh, New Year's, New Year's Eve, and th throughout this new year, and every new year, quite frankly. I'm always so forgetful of that, so I did want to mention that. And I am getting better about adding product descriptions to respond to some other comments uh, and model numbers, but you know, quite a few tools I just pick up, and a lot, a lot of times I don't even have a company name, so I have no idea about them. But I'm trying to do my best to include as much information so people can hunt down some of the stuff I review and talk about. Anyway, anyway what we have here is we have 3M wire nuts. These would be considered top shelf wire nuts, very high quality. This is a very old 3M and all wire nuts have tiny little printing. You can barely see it, but actually it's almost impossible, but you can see right, where is it hiding? Here we go, let me see if you can zoom in. You really basically need that magnifying glass identifier wire nuts, but you can see this is a vintage 3M wire nut. And these old, these are what wire nuts kind of used to be like. Instead of being the hard nylon or whatever plastic they're making them out of now, they used to be a vinyl. And the problem with these is they would degrade, they get hard, and they want to crack. And I just wanted to point out that this 3M wire nut here is who knows how old, decades old. I mean, I mean this wire nut could be from the 80s. And it's still supple, perfect condition, as good as being able to use it today. I think they do still make some vinyl ones. But this does have the very old style 3M logo. So when you buy premium, premium grade wire nuts, you can really rely on them for the long term. Not so much for the, the short, shorter term, I would say. Not that they would crack apart, but any wire nuts where I've seen the plastic get broken apart has always been the cheap ones. So here are all these premium grade 3Ms. Some of these wire nuts are, for a wire nut, outrageously expensive. 50 cents, 75 cents for an individual wire nut. But as they say, you get what you pay for. You can really rely on them. So this red size here, these have like a uh, kind of a rubberized overmolding to uh, relieve tension on the wire. And they just have a beautiful build quality, really excellent oversized thick coils inside. They also have this style here, which have really deep, uh, they're not silicone. I assume that they're uh, PVC but they have these flexible kind of strain relief boots. Really deep, integrated. If you overstrip the wire and maybe you have it sticking out a little too much, you don't have to worry about it so much because you have so much or you have a lot of extra skirt on these. As well as providing strain relief. So just to show you what real premium top shelf wire nuts look like, these are what they look like. This blue one is probably a dollar a piece. So you really, they charge a lot of money for those. Uh, for these wire connectors, but if you want to buy some and then not have to worry about them 
that's absolutely what I'd recommend. There's also other connectors such as these which are used in lighting systems. These take solid core wire where you just take the solid core. If I can get this to focus, you just push it in. I'm not going to waste this connector because it's one way. Once you put the wire in, you don't get it back out. And these are ideals. I think we can almost see it. Yeah, now you can read it where it says ideal. So a lot of these connectors do have the manufacturer printed on them. They're just, it's usually microscopic printing. And so these are just quick connects where you can put solid core wire into them and then take two pieces of wire that were, that you may need to occasionally unplug. And that's why they're used in construction and lighting systems. And then it turns it into a nice solid socket. So that's what some of those are. We also have ones that are traditionally associated with telephone, although this is a large style quick connector. These are tend to be used by telephone and telecommunications technicians. And these are, this particular one is rated anywhere from 12 gauge, from as small as 20 gauge, I should say, all the way up through some pretty heavy duty 12 gauge. All these types of connectors are filled with silicone, so they're ready to go for outdoor contact and you put in the wire and then like on this style, it has this huge cam. The wire actually goes into holes that are in the cam and then you just fold it over and it pulls the wire through the body, creating a large contact area, super duper secure. And then it just clips on with a snap on the back. The nice thing about this style is that you can use a flathead screwdriver and undo and release the snap and actually be able to reuse these. But if you need to make reliable connections in a basically a hurry, then there are styles of connectors like these. This type of connector costs two or three bucks uh, for a single connector. So you really have got to need it. And these little guys are telecommunications cable splicing connectors, but they're great for any small gauge wire. And uh, we'll go ahead and sacrifice one of them, but this is a time, these would be for 22 gauge, 24 gauge wire. And this is where they need to splice a couple of that thin solid core wire, although the appropriate size stranded wire tends to work okay. You just got to be a, use a little bit larger stranded wire because the way these work is they just have a little, if we can get this to focus, yes, a little piece of sheet metal in there that has two slots. And so when that notch goes over the piece of the solid core wire, it kind of, uh, gouges out some pockets on each side or two cuts and that's how it provides a solid connection and you just push in the wire and this is just a larger version that would take three wires you push in the wire they're pre-filled with silicone and then they just snap shut oh this one's not cooperating here we go now these are you can never remove them so they're all they're always disposable but they're nice because once you get them on the wire then you can crimp them down. You can see how they overfill it with silicone. Why is my phone not focusing for me today? There we go. Come on now. And so you can see where the silicone actually squeezes out and will fill up the entire space within the connector. So you can feel real confident. These things are known for being pretty reliable for a very long time in damp conditions. And to give a couple of quick examples, even though I did overstrip these wires, these are two 14 gauge solid core wire. This would be the most common wire a homeowner or anybody doing any kind of maintenance uh, would run into in the United States at least. And so in this situation, I've seen so many times where people have used red wire nuts and they really don't work. You can see this wire nut, I can just continue to get, it kind of wants to cinch down, but I'm just able to continue to spin it until it wants to basically start stripping out the back of the wire. You can see why wire nuts do work well because if you do have high quality ones they really get a very deep bite into the wire. But we know that that red's just going to be way too big. It's totally inappropriate. This orange would be a good size but in this situation we yellow would be optimal for two 14 gauge wires and we just put on the wire nut and when you have a wire nut that's really perfect like this is as soon as it really cinches down and bottoms out it's just like any other fastener it will stop turning and all you, you can really feel the for it you'll just feel it stop and then at that point all you're doing is just twisting up the wires that's when you know you have a nice solid and reliable connection using a wire nut also surprisingly enough you do need somewhere between three eighths and a half inch of insulation that would be you know 10, 12 millimeters of insulation strip because the wires do sink in deeply. The second issue that I've run into is when uh, there's just not enough wire stripped, 
such as I have on this blue piece of wire, because what happens is the insulation starts getting caught up and bound in the bottom of the this plastic ridge inside the wire nut, and then that prevents the nut from actually being able to get all the way down and getting an appropriate bite on the wire. So sometimes I've certainly run into where it was the right size wire nut, just not sufficiently stripped wires for it to get a good proper bite. Anyway, I think I'm gonna kinda end my, or I am gonna end the discussion about wire nuts here. It's been 15 minutes and I don't even know half of what I've talked about. Besides wanting to get across and get people thinking about when they're using wire nets, I mean, there's, an, I'm sure, an amazing amount of fires that could be prevented all over the world if simply wire nets were just used with a little bit more care and a little bit more thought, making sure you have enough properly insulated wire and you're using the right size wire nut and you're making sure to twist them down until they actually stop turning. If those three things could be dealt with, wire nuts would really be uh, not such a disrespected form of electrical connection because most times it just is not a tool or an item that has been really used properly. I also forgot to mention that as far as my research is concerned, it was a Canadian back in 1931 who actually patented the first wire nut. For such a simple design, 1931 is less than a century ago for, it kind of seems surprising, surprisingly recent for such a, uh, uh, an interesting type of item. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing. If you haven't subscribed to the Caddis Maximus channel, please do. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.